Hello and how is everybody doing? I'm simply checking in to say hi. And I have some new plants. Aren't they nice? And so I'm in my butterfly chair, transforming, going through my own inner transformation. And I, it feels so good, everybody. It feels so good. Um, I've been processing as anyone who has followed my channel from the beginning knows that yes, I am a child of a pathologically narcissistic mother. And yes, I had three partners, one after the other. Um, one could have stayed with the first one if they were going to deal with somebody who was angry a lot, insecure constantly. Um, doesn't feel like you love them enough, even though everybody else can see that they that you do and they tell them. Um, it being an unappreciated, I, I could have stayed in that marriage if he really didn't care about what I had to say. And when we did things I wanted to do, he acted like it was just terribly hard of him. But uh, his love bombing technique was that he did all my activities that I liked to do and he enjoyed my food that I cooked. I was macrobiotic. I ate brown rice at every meal. Um, and he ate chicken at every dinner. So, you know, I told him that. I go, you know what? You might be tired of my rice, but when you met me, that's all I ate and you knew it. And as so I when I met you, you went hiking with me, you went camping with me, you did all the things I like to do until I married you. So when I divorced him, um, he became a really good father and he was also not so good at that. So for the love of my children, I did what I did. Um, so I follow the um, comedian Owen Benjamin and he said, uh, yeah, if a woman tells you that she has been with three narcissists, all her last three relationships are all narcissists, she's probably one. That's hilarious. And again, I'm glad that he hasn't had the experience. Um, you know, when I got these plants, the work guys didn't take their boots off and I had forgotten to roll up the rug. And so I spent all this energy physically moving and being on my hands and knees and scrubbing and scrubbing to get the stain out. And it's uh, North Carolina clay. So it's this reddish color. And I am glad I didn't have an all white rug, but that would have been um, something I never would do anyway. But anyway, so I'm scrubbing and scrubbing and getting all the stain out. And all of a sudden I remembered when I was living in Virginia with that last bad daddy narcissist. And he would go out to the bar and not come home. So I would go upstairs and I made myself a haven and I had my art materials up there. And there's several videos in 2020 and in 2021 um, before I left him in October that show the garden and it shows his shed. Um, it shows where I used to live, but I lived there and I would go upstairs for the sanctuary. And so I brought a bottle of wine up. So he comes up there and I had more than one bottle of wine. I had a little wine rack, you know, because that was my she haven because he was always going to the bar. So I'm up there just enjoying myself, reading a book. I don't know what, maybe I was doing the I Ching, which I'm gonna teach you all, the I Ching. Um, get three coins that are all the same in the, to prepare. Anyway, um, he comes up and he's about to throw my wine bottle through the window. And he's mad at me because I'm drinking upstairs but he, got, he won't come home to dinner. You know, I, I come home for dinner. I'm gonna have it ready at seven. There's no him, okay? That's narcissist abuse. So nobody has to convince me that I'm the narcissistic one if I indeed had three narcissistic people that were that crazy. <laughs> so I, I was like, talked him off the van. Stop, do you know what you're doing? Stop, 
That's a window. That's a window. They go off. He bashed himself in the face once because we had a disagreement. And this is before I um, revealed my humanity. This was after I paid off $15,000 on one credit card and $5,000 on another. Because we were in love and we were going to go buy a house together. So I went there and it was, it was just, I kept asking him, do you think you've had enough beer? I mean, why don't we keep a chart? And every time you have one, you can write that you've had one. So that way you can keep account of them because he was just putting them into the garbage and out of sight, out of mind. And I was sort of like, well, this is trying to keep you accountable. I didn't realize he was a raging alcoholic because he told me I never drank this much until I met you. <laughs> so this is before I uh, revealed my uh, human side when I did over drink at a party and other people saw me and made him look bad. So then I was shunned and he hated me and he, it was terrible. And he, it was like terrible. Um, and he, he wouldn't come home and that's probably when he came home and we're gonna throw the wine bottle out the window. But before that, uh, before I became human to him and he um, felt that he must've been the vile one, I asked him why he was drinking so much and he bashed himself into the, in the face. Not just once. Poof, again. He took his hand just like this. Poof, again. And, and I was like watching him swell up. And you, what you do is you disassociate. So that's what happened. You've, you disassociate and you have trauma amnesia. So when people go, oh, the empath is actually the narcissist, they can eat shit and die because uh, I know what I am. And... Uh, you know, die as far as off of my life. Like they don't have to physically die. They can die in their significance. And as far as I know, they are, except for Owen Benjamin, because he's a comedian. And it's kind of funny um, because uh, one of the things that I do want to do, one of my goals is to turn these events that I have experienced into comedy and to do a stand up about it. Um, sitting down, of course, in, here in my patio with my with my plants and um just talking but i'll have notes so the intention is to be a lot more formal going forward and to have prepared material because i'm creating a space so i can finish writing and that's the other thing i have to say about artists would be artists would be writers you have to create the space so i realized that um between the lights at night that are I, street lights that are really too bright and the fact that I'm really close to a parking lot and a roadway, I think that I feel more um, protected. Like I have two sentinels now and it's very warm out here. It's actually tropical. I have a um, passion flower that started growing this month and wait a second yeah yeah in the beginning of no no no, the very end of august and are we in september now yes <laughs> no we're in october okay you guys um i was in a i was in my right brain so the left brain wasn't working as well so yes um in September, it started, and, I, and it's October now, of course, and uh, it's still going. <laughs> so I'm, I'm making space for myself where I feel safe and uh, able to finish those books that I already have. My first manuscript is at 80,000, and i got to polish it up and put some uh, prequels in there. You know, I've got chapters. Um, and yes, it's, a, it's about, it's a memoir of when I was uh, in the peep show, and I was uh, what people don't believe me either. I was hands off, I was a phone sex girl, and I did it because I was desperate. And so I never did have actually, knock on wood, sexual abuse until that last bad daddy. So that's good. Um, and it's so good to be away. Um, yeah. There's the, there's a video I have that, that's very popular actually. Um, 
not as popular as the penis size, uh, the myth of modern art. Um, and then I did, the, my very first video uh, basically was a monologue that I totally 100% ad-libbed, extra per teaser or something. And I'm actually, it's so cute now that I look at it and I 100% unrehearsed it. I just did it. And I was changing my bikini top and I took it off while the camera was rolling. But like, 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 poof, like right now, you can't see my nips <laughs> if they were bare and they were bare. And then I had this big wine glass in the foreground, like my hand. And so I was like, joking with it. You know, my face went into the wine glass. <laughs> It's really cute. If you go to my channel and then click on me and then make the videos um, so that you, the ordered most popular first, you'll see. So the one that's climbing up um, is this one. Uh, good news for women over 50. You're, you're probably better off single. And that is true unless you want to have sex um, and you'll settle for somebody. But um, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I don't think, I, I don't have any judgments on it. I mean, that's what I did with the bad daddy. He was really, until I developed myself, um, I, I take responsibility, you know? Uh, I'm get, I, getting to know the man, getting to know who a man is. I didn't have a father that was present, remember? I had a narcissistic mother. She prevented him from getting to know his children or encouraging us to do what he suggested was our, in our best interest because she was competing with us for his attention and she was competing with him for authority over the children. But he was allowed to spank us so he could spank me and that was the trauma bond. That's the other thing. So the only male attention I ever got that was really positive to me as far as I finally got some was when he overpowered me and, and, and spanked me because I broke something because I was a child. <sighs> you get punished for breaking something and you're a child. Isn't that sick? So um, that woman needed to be punished for putting something in the wrong place or whatever. But that's neither here nor there, as they say. What it was is I realized that the attention, physical attention I got from my dad was when he would charge to spank. And so I was addicted to that charge of a man. And now I see that as a trauma bond and have cleared it out of my energy field. Uh, there is the, um, spiritual alchemy that's going to be part of more of my teachings uh, that I am learning by way of that video that I played, um, spiritual alchemy just before this one or so, um, but I recorded from Crow Triple Seven Radio. So I, I, it was free program, but I suggest you going there and donating and listening and learning a thing or two um, that you don't have to believe everything everybody says. It's like, you go into a bookstore, does that mean you like every single book in there? No. So just like you don't have to like everything I say, I don't have to like everything Owen Benjamin has to say, you don't have like, you don't have to like everything Crow Triple Seven has to say, radio. Um, <clears throat> but I do um, resonate with Fortune St. Germain and I realize there's a lot of resistance to him uh, by reading the comments that I was access to when I was member. I'm not a member right now, because I'm putting my energy into my book, my life, you know, here are the plants. Um, they got manifested. Um, I'm so lucky. So that's the heads up on what's happening with me. Um, hoping you all are doing something, like learning how to ground, put your feet on the ground. If you can't put your feet on the ground, put your hand on a tree. Uh, use your imagination, work the energy through your body, find out what the pranic tube's all about. Um, Pranayama, three-part breath, all of these things, because they're so helpful. <laughs> they're so helpful. Um, yep. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. anything else?
Nope. Talk to you all later.